to Nintendo Unleashed episode 62. I'm Armando. I'm one of your hosts this week. And I'm back, guys. I'm back. I missed last week's episode because I had stuff to do. I got new glasses. Yeah. Um, wow, um, you already replaced them? Yeah, yeah. They died and, no and one, you've already moved on to new ones. Less yeah, than no one week. tweeted hashtag ripped glasses. I did. Right, so, uh, you don't count. <laughs> I think I tweeted ripped eyesight. Really? Well, I didn't get it then. <laughs> um, why do anyway. I have it? <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, uh, joining me this week is Connor. Hola. That's it? Okay. Noah is also here Hola. this week. Yeah. yeah. Did you just yeah, let but... your feet Tomo speak for you? <laughs> <laughs> I, guess, I guess I may have a little bit... Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> that would have been great. Oh, just and we have there. another. Yeah, and we have another guest, or another host this week, and Mike is back with us. <gasps> I'm back. Back yeah. again. What's up, guys? Dick How's it going, Mike? It's been a while. It's been a month. Fantastic. I know. I've. It's so much has happened. Not a lot has happened. But I finished Twilight Princess HD. <gasps> nice. Yep. And you're the only one that has finished it from here. Yeah. So. I'm. I'm slow. Props to you. It happened. I don't judge. Yeah. You. Okay. I think the last episode you were on, we were hating on me, Tomo. You and yeah, I were hating still, on me and all that. Yeah. Still am. I remember that. Oh, you still are. Okay. Oh yeah. No, hate it. No, no, no. I like I like the app. It's it's a lot better than I thought it'd be. Um, I'm just tired of me. I'm done. I don't I don't want to dress them. I don't want them talking like this. I'm done. I just <laughs> ugh, I want something else. Yeah. It's been since um, 2006. I'm ready to move on. Ten years. Well. Well, they're going to be with us for a long time now. Unfortunately. Oh, yeah. They're yeah. secured for the NX generation. Thanks, oh, yeah. $40,000 a day. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you guys are new to this show and don't know what it's about, well, Nintendo Unleashed is Blaze Geek's weekly Nintendo podcast where we get together and just talk about Nintendo or sometimes we talk about Cory in the House or <laughs> we used to talk about Amiibo a lot. Of course, that has stopped. Um, that died because, out. Yeah, because amiibos were a mistake. We uh, we can all agree that to that. Um, I don't agree yeah. with that. All, all Connor agrees with that. Okay, <laughs> Connor. I mean, I never got to the point where I regretted buying any. Well, yeah, I don't regret buying you. them. I mean, lucky you. I regret uh, the stock shortage that happened. I used to like that though. It made it more fun, right? Yeah, it made it more it fun. It made it special when you finally got that, whatever, Robin Lucina. And, by the way, still hasn't came back yet. Almost <laughs> yeah. a year. One month away from a year. That's Are those the only ones I haven't gotten? Like, uh... Um, I want to say, yeah. So, dang. Hmm. Maybe oh, well. they're saving it for... I don't know. Just go, uh... Oh. Check my eBay page. 150 bucks. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. I don't know. I don't have those. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, this week we have a lot of stuff to talk about. We're going to talk about Pokemon. We'll talk about NX Rumors, Splatoon, and so much more. But before we do that, uh, I just want to mention something real quick. Uh, so Patreon. Uh, Blaze Geek's Patreon is going to change a bit. Um, we're just getting rid of one of the tiers, the $10 tier. So we only have two tiers right now. And it's the one dollar tier where, where you get access to the monthly podcast, the Blake's Geek podcast, and now you'll be able to get early access to all our podcasts, so our current podcast. So you'll get twenty four hour early access to Nintendo Unleashed and the PlayStation Point just for uh, pledging a dollar. And then the five dollar tier is for video series like Flash Fire. That's gonna come back slowly. So we're gonna work on that. And yeah, you're, you'll get early access to that, 4 or $5. Um, so yeah, that's the only change. And if you want to support us that way, just go to patreon.com slash Um Yeah, and well, let's just dive into our usual routine. So what have you guys been playing this last week? Uh, I just downloaded, well, I downloaded a few games. So I've been continuing with Twilight Princess Picross. If I recall, 
uh, correctly. Last week I said I hadn't played it, but this week I've actually done quite a few puzzles. Um, because I've actually learned how to get good at it. I was just... I was in a place where I thought I was good, but I was failing to acknowledge a lot of important techniques, but now I've really improved my game. Uh, and it's pretty... It, I'm really enjoying it, you know? Um, I'm back to enjoying this version as much as I enjoyed Mario Picross on the Virtual Console, so I'm having fun with that. Additionally, you know, Mutant Mud Super Challenge, I bought, but I haven't actually played it yet. But what I did buy and have played a little bit of is Donkey Kong Country 2 on the new 3DS, um, which I'm finding to be pretty fun. Uh... I'm unsure if I want to go for all the collectibles because I feel like that could potentially be pretty frustrating. Mm-hmm. Um, but eh, it's been pretty good. And this I this week I'm looking forward to playing some Splatoon. I played some yesterday. It's been at least like a month or a month and a half since I played that game just because I've been so busy with everything. But I uh, I discovered that I still love it, so that's good. Okay. So what? And what about Fire Emblem? I uh, have um. Oh God. Well, <laughs> I, I played a mission and just. Uh, it, maybe I just wasn't in the best mood, but I was just feeling so bored and underwhelmed, and I was like, God, why, why am I still playing this? Um, oh. And I, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to give it another shot, but like, if I still feel as bored and just like not sure what the, I just not sure what the point is, not sure what I'm enjoying or if I'm enjoying anything. I don't know if I want to keep going. So I'm gonna give it another shot, but I wasn't feeling too good about Fire Emblem a few days ago. Okay. Um, yeah, I would say take a break mm-hmm. and come back to it later. Yeah. Um, are, did you ever mess around with like uh, pairing up units to have kids? Um, not really. I mean, I only have one kid so far. Uh, so far, and that's like I think her name is Kana, who is just uh, mm-hmm. Corin's kid. Um, okay. I don't. And it seems like the kids are weak as hell, so I don't really think they're worth having. I don't know. Um. Yeah. No, I, but, they're not. Uh, they're probably the strongest players. Oh. Yeah, well, well, to get I mean, to get them to be like a really good uh, unit, you have to like max out your the the characters that you're pairing up together, so they can get new skills and so on and so on. Mm-hmm. But but once you put all the hard work to that, when the when you have the kid, the kid will uh, yep. having the kid in your party will actually pay off. So. Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, pretty much did just... the final two chapters, which is the kids. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty cool. I mean, yeah. I might try that. Maybe that's my issue. I just feel like there's, I just feel like there's a lot of systems that it can get kind of complicated for me. And for me, video games I use as a means to relax, or as a means to relax. And when I'm when I'm having to manage all these things, it's like I'm not sure if I'm having fun anymore. You know, it's like I want to be able to, uh, you know, as lazy as this sounds, I just want it to be something that makes sense quickly. Um, okay. okay. So, yeah. um, all right. Um, Connor, what about you? I played Love Live, started actually not. I gave up on Jap- the Japanese server because I think yeah, playing so both games, both ranked over level 100, it just took way too much because that's like 10 songs every time I want to drain my uh, LP meter. So mm-hmm. that was just draining me way too fast. So I. I've started playing EN a lot more. Uh, yeah. I almost, yeah, I just gave up on JP. Yeah, I'm just using I'm it now anymore. for... Uh, I'm, I'm keeping it for um, when, like, new songs are added. Like, uh, mm-hmm. that Aquarium Aquarius song was just added yesterday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah. I'm also playing Pokemon Platinum. I think I was playing that last week. I'm in Victory Road. I almost finished, but then these undanked people were all like, gotta record. Um, How do you find time to play all these Pokemon games? I just... It took, it took me over a year to beat Alpha Sapphire. Oh my god. When I'm uh, like just relaxing at home, watching YouTube videos, often I just I like to play a game that doesn't need my full attention, and Pokemon's kind of at the point where I doesn't need my full attention because I've played most of them so much and they aren't that hard anyway to figure out where to go. Okay. See, I can't even do that with Pokemon. I have to pay attention. Uh, I have to. Uh... If anything, I'll listen to a podcast, but but I, I can't I can't watch something on TV and then have my a game on my 3DS. I can't do it. Mm-hmm. Just can't. 
And I think that's it. All right. Um, right. Mike? Yes, what? Huh? What about you? What did oh. you play? Uh, you might want to edit that because you cut out. Anyways, uh, I've been playing a lot of Digimon Story on PlayStation Vita now. And yeah, Vita. I'm still <laughs> playing <laughs> Fire Emblem. Uh, I got like five or six save files going just matching up you know, people for the kids to get the stats and everything. And I found out it's not... You, how do I say it? You can't marry Corrin off to somebody else to get an equal amount of kids. Like, it's going to leave somebody without a kid if you take away um, a female to marry. Like, it shorts you one person, and so you're not going to get a kid. The only way to do it is to stay on the sidelines as Corrin marry up everybody, and then Corrin marries one of the kids. Then you get Kana. Like, oh, okay. I I find that frustrating, because I was like, oh, well, there went marrying Ryoma. Oh, well. But other than that... Um, well, it's kind of like I, Awakening, isn't it? Like, because um, I remember... Yeah, I, in Awakening, I could pair up everybody and get the kids fine. Like, there was an equal amount of numbers. But, um, shout out to Cordelia, by the way. And it, yeah. it didn't work. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> well, I was gonna marry her off to, um, um, oh man, I forget the name, main character. Um, yeah, him. Anyways, and it did. She's like, you can't marry them. I'm like, oh, oh well, she can be my wife then. But <laughs> so yeah, so I've been mainly just playing those. I finished Twilight Princess HD about a week ago, and then I was thinking about getting Star Fox, but I'll probably wait for like a price drop on it. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably wait for that too. Uh, so I've been playing, I've been playing a lot of games actually. Um, so the last last week when I wasn't on, I started um, Quantum Break on Xbox One. I beat it. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, I think it's one of my favorite games of the year so far. I, I really like how after so it split into so after a, a chapter basically. You get like a thirty-minute TV episode of just exposition of other characters aside from the main character, um, and I really like that. Um, and I beat that. It, t- it took me like five, like hours to beat it. So it's a short game, but I needed a short game after playing, after spending hours on Fire Emblem. I needed a short game. Um, then uh, PlayStation, I've been playing Rocket League. I plan on that. And right now, I'm playing Ratchet and Clank. It's really good. And yeah, that, that's it for me. Cool. Um, so I'm going to go into a couple of the downloads available this week. Uh, not really any notable downloads on Wii U, uh, aside from, I guess you could say, the virtual console release of Brain Age, which was actually like the original DS virtual console game for Wii U in both Europe and Japan, if I remember correctly. So a little bit strange that we're just now getting it. Um, what I will say is that uh, Go Nintendo's Kevin Cassidy has a very funny series called My Parents Play, in which his parents play games, and his parents played that game in his most recent video, so go check that out. Very funny. Um, and also, there is a bunch of Runbo DLC as well as a discount. So, Well, for starters, the discount game is normally 15 bucks, and I believe it's reduced to 10 As for the DLC, um, there's a v- variety of DLC. There's a sort of new campaign slash level pack called Satura's Space Adventure, which is available for 7 bucks, uh, And the character Lilac from Freedom Planet is available for free. And there are also a bunch of uh, costume-slash-music packs, which are $2 each. And you can get everything for $13. I would personally just go for the Satura's Space Adventure for $7, because um, then you can also get Lilac for free. I don't, really, I don't really think the other character skins and music is worth it. Um, I'm salty. But hey, if you really want to, then go ahead. Huh? I'm salty. Why is that? Because there's an anime pack, and I was, like, so hype. And that's just, like, a costume that looks like a magical girl. And I'm like, yeah, so it's like, why, worst, it's like a g- worst anime <laughs> genre. No. Yeah, and it's... Expecting? I was expect huh? Like, I wasn't expecting it to be an actual anime character, but I was expecting it to be more, like... I don't know. Like, kind of a typical... Like stereotypical, like big eye, pink hair type thing. 
not just magical girl. Mm. Okay. Cool. And on the 3DS side of things, uh, there's some pretty... Well, oh, also on Wii U. Oh, God. Uh, the Lost Reavers open beta, which, according to Cartridge Games on Twitter, is pretty awful. Um, <laughs> he he, uh, he cited a few things. So first he said, the first time he tried to play it, there was a horrible audio glitch resulting in this, like, high-pitched, sh- like, shrieking noise. And not, not the Wii U, like, uh, freeze noise, where it's like, Dang, but, like, something else entirely. Um... And additionally, there was an instance where his he, his weapons worked, but they just didn't do any damage, um, which was equally bizarre. Uh, so I guess it's worth trying because it is free to start, but early impressions are less than glowing. Apparently, I mean, we already, already kind of noticed that the game is visually quite ugly, um, but I guess it could potentially hold certain values for certain people. And I'm not the only thing I'm not yet sure is where the pain comes into play. I'm assuming it's for currency to buy certain weapons and outfits and stuff, but who knows? And on the 3DS side of things, uh, there's some pretty awesome virtual console games. Well, to be specific, they're only on the new 3DS, but Donkey Kong Country and Two, Diddy's Conquest, and they, these are all eight dollars, by the way. Uh, Super Metroid and The Legend of Zelda: A Link to the Past. So three games that are. Um, like god tier games these are all absolutely amazing and uh sadly there is no cross buy or cross buy discount for if you own them on wii u so if you own all three of these on wii or whatever platform i don't recommend buying them again but if you have a new 3ds and you don't yet have any one of these games i like go buy it they're all really good um just like some of nintendo's best games they've ever released um and like i said i'm playing donkey kong country 2 right now Additionally, on 3DS Bravely Second End Layer is now available for 40 bucks, And we've got potentially an unboxing video coming soon. Potentially. Yeah. Um, so stay yeah. tuned for that. And, of course, Fire Emblem Fates DLC as usual. So pretty decent week with a good variety. Probably a better week for 3DS than Wii U. Although the Runbow DLC is pretty cool. I don't want to discredit that. Uh, and that's it for this week. Are you okay. ready, memes? Aye, aye, Captain. I can't hear you. Aye, aye, aye Captain. Captain. Oh, there's a splat fest, and it's SpongeBob versus Patrick. Oh man. Oh. The... Uh, I tweet. I tweeted about this. I was so. I was so Way surprised to be by this. I, I was so surprised. I because when I saw it, I was, I couldn't oh, believe it. I, I because if you guys remember back when Splatoon was launched, was yeah, well, yes, there, so there were all right. these. There were all these Meverse memes back when it first launched about Squidward. <laughs> there were so many of them. Like, 80% of the meme posts were dedicated to Squidward. And now, like, 80? it's finally come... I think it's more. Maybe, maybe. I mean, at least when it launched. Um, and, like, now those memes have finally come to fruition. And, like, part of me wants to believe that Nintendo was paying attention. And they're like, you know what the people would love... But I have a feeling it's just a money deal. Well, I'm sure which... they were looking... Like, they they read the Miiverse stuff somewhat because mm. they post uh, fan art drawn on Oh, yeah, Miiverse. good point. Good point. So yeah, I remember they, they did that for Fire Emblem. They probably would have seen all the Squidward stuff at least and then mm-hmm. maybe just thought, hey, Nickelodeon, this appears to be a shared thing for some reason. Yeah. Probably could you got that, fi- you got that fish theme, like sponsor something. Didn't Nintendo sponsor like uh, s- something in some Nickelodeon awards or something? I don't know. Maybe. They were at some Nickelodeon. Awards. Oh yeah, that thing where paper or like Mario was texting Luigi yeah. and Paper oh, Mario. Oh, yeah, that, 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 biz- that bizarre about his like or, slime yeah. fetish or something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Paper yeah. Mario is just responding with emojis. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that... That was bizarre. <laughs> By the way, I recommend you guys to go to Splatoon's Tumblr uh, page. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, They're man. embracing the Spongebob they posted memes. The, they, they posted the, Cra- uh, the Mr. Krabs blurry Blur. thing. Yeah. 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 No, and they, they have some really good art of, like, Squidward in his house. <laughs> oh, it's covered in paint. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I think I saw that, too. Um, yeah, great. Yeah, qu- so, quality memes. Yeah. What team are you guys on? I think I'm Patrick. Patrick. What? Yeah, Wombo. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are Patrick. I'm Team SpongeBob. 
I don't even know right. who I am. I kind of. Lens pop. I like them both equally. I'd have to say though, I like the yellow ink better than the pink. Exactly. So if I was yeah. gonna yeah. play, okay. that's I would a good, that's choose a good... SpongeBob. But, but yeah. the likely my only fear, my only playing... fear is that they'll change it slightly, like they did with the Transformers one, where it won't be like a straight red, but it'll be like orange. Mm. Yeah. I I, nope. I hope it's I hope it's straight yellow. I mean that would be cool. I just... Oh no, it is yellow. It is yellow. Oh, how do we know though? The shirt the color. The picture that. Yeah, and the, and the color, yeah. So the art, uh, the where uh, Squidward's house is covered in paint, it's mm -hmm. covered in yellow paint and pink paint. Uh, all right, I guess we can draw that from that. Sure, that works. Yeah. Um, um, so, uh, yeah, I, I thought this was fake at first. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's it, I'm all like, yeah, it's like, it's too good. It's uh, It looks too good to be real. Um, yeah. <laughs> so what do you guys want to see more out of, uh, Splatfest, do you guys want to see more of these like um, kinds of Splatfest where they're yeah. I'm actually, uh, I'm making personally a shift between something that we know, that we mm -hmm. grew up with or something like yeah, that? Yeah, I'm actually personally fine with the sponsored ones. Um, a lot of people are like, oh, you sell outs, but like, not really, because if you, the first time you boot up Splatoon, it says, warning, there may be like advertisements in this game. So it should really come as a surprise to people. Company can't um, even be a sellout. Yeah, the that's not how that works. can, that, but a company yeah, can't. Yeah, that's not that's not how that works, Twitter. Um, <laughs> Prove it. <laughs> but so I personally think they're interesting because it's something you're more familiar with, you're going to be more invested in than like air travel versus car travel. <laughs> um, what, where's the um, uh, Nintendo yeah. properties? What? Yeah, good oh, point. Yeah. Mario versus Mar yeah, Zelda. We need, Mar Sh Mar Mario Mario versus versus Mar we need Mario versus Sonic. You guys are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. Where are those? I mean, yeah. it's cool that they're getting like third-party stuff, but mm -hmm. well, they have so the many intellectual Pokemon properties. Red versus blue one. Oh, true. Good point. That was the only one. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, but they should do more of them. Mario versus Luigi would be great. Where's Mario Kart versus Diddy Kong Racing? <laughs> that one. <laughs> That'll be great. By the way, yeah, I want to see more like that. I want to see more stuff like that. Something else worth noting about this Splatfest is it's the first one where two regions can actually uh, be paired with and fight against each other. North America yeah. and Europe are doing this together, and you can be with Europeans on your team if you're in North America. Mm -hmm. It's actually okay, so this is it's the ultimate thing. My only, my only, com well, it's not really a valid complaint. Well, maybe it is. I really wish Splatoon had a region-specific matchmaking, aside from Splatfests, because, god damn, are those Japanese players good. <laughs> they're just, they're, yeah, yeah, as, yeah, they're, they're generally, a, they're generally a cut above the rest. Um, yeah, so it, that's why it, I, yeah, it's like, it's like, um, so if you play at night, uh, <laughs> yeah, you're gonna get paired up with a lot of Japanese players. Oh, yeah. And it feels like uh, when you barely start playing like a Call of Duty game, <laughs> and you're like a noob, yeah. And you get you get in a lobby with a bunch of people that have been playing it for months. Feels like that. Mm. <laughs> get you get uh, like squashed. Um, so I was gonna bring up a question. So, um, granted, we're gonna be able to uh, be paired up with uh, people in from Europe in this Splatfest. Is it because of the theme of the of the Splatfest, or is it because? Maybe a lot of people aren't playing anymore. I think it's probably the second one. Um, it could be a potential yep. move to boost player base, yeah. which is fair. Um, I, I think it's actually a very good time to do it because they just also released the big update with the new weapons. Um, oh. So I think, you know, within this range of two or three weeks, Latoon will definitely see a spike in playership or oh, player yeah. numbers, um, myself included. I'll just yeah, be part of that back. group. Yeah, I'm coming back. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll play on Saturday. Right. Can't wait. So I think it's very smart to do all this stuff at once on their part. Um, and again, there you know there's going to be the second Sheldon's Picks pack soon. Not sure when. Hopefully they can do a Splatfest then too, because again, boost boost the player numbers. Um, yeah. It, it works, you know. And it's unfortunate that the game's constant flow of content has stopped because that's what kept a lot of people, myself included, very hooked. And the fact that stopped, it's like, I mean, the game is still fun, but that incentive to come back isn't really there. But with events like this, it is. So I think it's cool mm -hmm. that they're doing it. Yeah. Um, 
by the way. I'm just going to plug a video that was that went up on Blazekick. So if you don't have a Wii U and don't have don't have access to Splatoon, you can go on Blazekick's uh, YouTube channel and check out like the, the Splatfest announcement in Splatoon. Uh, so usually in the announcements, Callie and Marie usually do some banner, a banter of like um, what team they're going to choose and stuff like that. Um, for this Splatfest, they were. St- I'm not gonna. Okay, I'm not gonna spoil it, but it was really good. <laughs> Did they say like sp- any Splatoon quotes? Huh? Did they say any and like any any famous quotes or anything from SpongeBob? Uh, yeah. And, <laughs> oh my god. And you guys, and, okay, so you guys spoiled what uh, they say <laughs> when you oh. introduced this segment. So right. thank you. Well, I mean, okay. that's, that's kind of a that's kind of a given that they're gonna say something from SpongeBob, you know. No, no, no. The, the stuff that you did when when you started the segment. Oh, <laughs> you didn't mention yeah, that. Like... No one would have known, though. Yeah, you shouldn't have said that. Oh well, never that's, mind. All, that's on you. No, go watch the video. Go yep. watch the yeah, video. Go watch, go watch the video. I, I, yeah, I made sure to walk around the plaza and get some memes. So mm, that's good. <laughs> go go soak in the memes. They're good. It's good for your health. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So go go do it. Go watch it. Next time. So, uh, Good segue. Topic. There's a world record set for Super Mario Bros. New one. Yeah. What? Ooh, I oh. watched the video. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I watched the video. It was, I mean, pretty cool. You're, I don't want to say standard fare because it's a very impressive achievement. But it's, you know, kind of what you'd expect. It's pretty, it's pretty much seems like a near flawless run. You know, obviously, the only time he stopped um, was on purpose to initiate a glitch. Uh, which I guess allowed him to finish a. L- l- I'm not really sure what it did, honestly. <laughs> but there was this. It was a weird glitch where when he finished the level, he jumped to the flagpole at such a time where like a bullet bill was going along the bottom of the screen, and Mario would like wasn't able to walk beyond the flag or something. I don't know. But it, I mean, props to this guy. Um, he seems pretty young, if I'm judging correctly. So, very, very cool achievement. He should be very proud. Um, and it's very cool that to this day, you know, even 30 years later, world records are still being broken for that game. And it just shows how much, I guess, depth there is, whether intentional from the developers or not. <laughs> Most of it not, you know, but still cool. Hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. I, th- I think you beat the game in under five minutes, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah, like, or around like four, five minutes. Yeah, it was like 4.57 or something like that. Jeez. Yeah. Go outside. It's... <laughs> it's pretty impressive, though. But... Congratulations. Yeah. We should do an interview with them. Do oh, it. Yeah. Reach out to them on Twitter. We'll yeah. find it. We'll find a way. Okay. It's like, how are your thumbs? <laughs> yeah, how are your hands holding up? Yep. Um, anyway, moving on. So, Pokemon Sun and Moon. I'm not sure. Actually, this was recent, so I don't think we could have talked about it, but there was a lot of salt in the internet. After the big Koro Koro Pokemon Sun and Moon dump was actually just saying next issue we will have Sun and Moon. Well, dump. actually, or next I, not next issue next month. Next month. Yes, they yeah. said they specifically mm-hmm. say May will start uh, Pokemon Sun and Moon content. Right. Which so if it might was, not be next issue. If it was through Koro Koro, then they'd say June because May's Koro Koro is out. And they always word it like that. Like, Koro Koro. Mm. Pretty sure most monthly magazines, like, May's issue releases in April. That kind of thing. So, right. a lot of people are kind of taking this as there's going to be something outside of Koro Koro that reveals info in May. Mm. Uh, some people are saying a Nintendo Direct. Some people are saying Pokinichi. I don't know why you'd want Pokinichi <laughs> again. <laughs> Uh, yeah, three's that, June. That turned out great the last time. <laughs> so uh, I would say E3. I would say E3. But they said May, not June. Mm-hmm. Good point. And I, I, I'm, I'm actually Koro fine. Koro, right? What? Mm-hmm. So this is Koro Koro, right? Yeah, Koro they Koro usually, said yeah. May. They, they usually at least reveal a Pokemon least one whenever whenever the new generation starts i think they revealed sylveon didn't they yeah they revealed sylveon in february 
and then uh, nothing else happened till E3. But we yeah. haven't. But if we're going by X and Y, uh, they also revealed Look, the region name, the starters, the box legendaries, uh, footage, and Sylveon. Whereas right now we have a wireframe yeah. woodpecker. And Magyarna, don't forget about her. All right, Magyarna, who was confirmed to be Steel Fairy in this uh, Koro Koro, by the way. I think we even said that that would be its typing, so yeah. yeah. It, it was pretty obvious. Uh, we got it right. Hey, you never know. It could have been a fire type. <laughs> could have been fairy fire. Yeah, probably never not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah, well, we'll see what we get from Koro Koro next month. Hopefully it's something that we can talk about, not just typings. <laughs> so, uh... More Pokemon news. Um, apparently, the Pokemon company wants a live-action movie being made or something. So, currently, the oh. rights are being fought over by uh, Warner Brothers, Sony, and Legendary Entertainment. Um, I think this rumor states that Legendary Entertainment is currently winning the bid. Well, legendary. Uh, so legendary is the studio. They want Chris that Nolan speaks. to do it. Oh, oh <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, legendary is the studio behind like uh, Godzilla. <laughs> uh, what's it? Uh, King Kong. Godzilla's a Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. Hey, maybe Pokemon can be uh, in that shared uh, monsters universe. You know, Godzilla versus. <laughs> Versus, I was going to say Donkey Kong. Versus King uh. Kong. <laughs> uh, yeah, Pokemon movie. Live action movie. Do you guys want one? Yes. Uh, you do? One of the originals, though, only for this one. For me, it really depends how they go about it. Um, if, like, presumably since it's a live action movie, what it would actually be is more... Uh, the humans are live action and the Pokemon are CG, which is something I really hate. I just hate when... Like Alvin and the Chipmunks? Yeah, except <laughs> this time it would be even bigger because the like there's only three. I think the sequel started introducing more Chipmunks. But in Pokemon, like yeah. the whole thing is uh, Pokemon. Like There's way more Pokemon than trainers, so... I just hate the mix of CG and live action. I wish they they would just go all CG. What if they do live action and just do puppets, puppet Pokemon? <laughs> that would actually be kind of cool. I don't think yeah. they would. Oh um, yeah, I mean, like I, I just as a hypothetical, I doubt that would actually happen. You know. My other um, thing, I mean, I hadn't, I don't watch a lot of movies, but from what I heard of these studios i mean you just heard arms talk about legendary entertainment uh warner brothers is currently trying to make every single universe have a cinematic universe with dc and hanna barbera uh and <sighs> sony well, um i mean well, pixels sony pixels uh emoji yeah sony's <laughs> angry kinda, birds sony's kind of <laughs> Not all there right they now. Have a, that Spider-Man movie coming out, but it, it's uh, they're working with Disney with, or Marvel with that. So, yeah, I'd say that's more Marvels. Hopefully, more Marvels doing. But um, yeah. So personally, from what I've heard, I don't. I probably wouldn't want any of these studios handling it. I mean, Disney. I, I said the, Disney. Mike we and had a I Twitter were conversation. Yeah, Mike and I were talking about that. I don't I, think... I lurked on that conversation. Did reply though. Talk about it here. I don't think Disney... What do you want Disney? I I would prefer... Uh... I'd probably prefer Disney over any of these. I don't yeah. think they would, just because, as Mike said, Disney is kind of big on, like, owning their stuff and merchandising their stuff. Which I don't think the Pokemon company would give them merchandising rights. 
Yeah, I don't think so either. It, I, I mean, if you watch the Jungle Book and you look how good the CG is there and the way they interact and the way Favreau, the director, has it, it would make an amazing Pokemon movie from them. But like you said, I don't. they're not going to give up the rights to the merchandising. They want that. They, they're going to want to license that stuff in their theme parks. And Disney already has, or I'm sorry, Nintendo is with Universal. So they're going to be in their theme parks in Japan and over here at some point. And you got to wonder how close, you know, like we had had that conversation about how the Pokemon company and Nintendo share a lot of stuff. So I don't think they're going to want to do that. And I really think DreamWorks is probably going to pick this up. Oh, and, and no. just, just to further their partnership with Universal. And Wait, I don't want it to go action? there. No. Oh, this could be their first one, I think. Do you, do you think they'll do a live action, though? Yes. Well, live action. This... It's taking over right now. I mean, Jungle Book, Pete's mm-hmm. Dragon. Uh, what else just came out recently? Um, Star Wars. I uh, can't think of. It was all of it except two characters. Stop that. And <laughs> they want a lot of live action stuff now. So it's it's transitioning to that from Disney's stories that from animated to live action. Now I'm just waiting for a live action Finding Nemo because that'd be funny. But <laughs> <laughs> or I can what if it's action. Pokemon? So all cars. Yeah. Oh, cars what? live action. <laughs> it would just be a it would just be a two hour <laughs> car commercial. It would just be two hours like I lost my car out here in California. <laughs> what if they do like a mix between um cars and fighting Nemo and some dude's uh, car car is named Nemo and he loses it, someone steals it. <laughs> Why are we talking right about there? This? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Great conversation though. Um, okay, I, I do want a Pokemon movie because I want to see how that looks like. Uh, it really depends on who gets it and who the director is to see if it actually works out. George um, Lucas. George. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, he loves CGs. There you go. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or who's making Warcraft? Do you guys know? I think it's Legendary. Yep. And it could be like that if you guys know what I'm talking about. Like, it's all CG, but there's some characters in there. They should just say, uh, uh, screw this and get Studio Ghibli to do it. Just go all anime. Just be like, screw this. Yeah, that, that, that'd, be, that'd be something. <laughs> um, Noah, do you want... Well, think about it this way, though. Uh, just to, uh-huh. before we segue. Um, the movie... I mean, that's a great tie-in to the app. Oh, yeah. Because isn't that live mm, action, good right? Point. Yeah. You know, you're taking a screen, you're looking at video, whatever, geotagging on your phone, and there's an animated Pokemon. So, oh, that's such that's marketing right there. Well, who, do I, who do I call? Well, like, <laughs> if the movie's just currently yeah, negotiating no. rights... It's going to be five years. Yeah, so is Pokemon Go... Like, They'd want it to still 25. be relevant, but will it be relevant in five years? Maybe, maybe it will move to VR. You don't know. <laughs> all I know is I'm, I'm not going to Compton to get a Steelix. It's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what storyline would you guys want to see in a Pokemon movie? The storyline for the anime or the game? Original. Mewtwo. Mewtwo. Mewtwo story. No, oh, mix it. I mean, you do a Mewtwo, and then you can throw in some Megas. Oh, actually, the Mewtwo story would actually be nice. They could start off uh, a uh, James, James Spader or... to beat Mewtwo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That that would be great. <laughs> or Andy Circus. I mean, he, I mean, Circus. Yes, yeah, yes. Andy he's Circus. mocap god. Might might as well. Yeah, he can play Ash. Yeah, and would Ash be American? Older. Or no, 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 no. I say we whitewash. So are we gonna have another? Are we gonna have another situation like right now? Uh, 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 the issue with the law, yeah. she took the role in goes and goes and the issue with issue the... issue with her, they have issue with her and the casting director, but but the issue with this is they could just say it's not set in one of the first four gens or like regions 
and then the character would be white because they'd be from Unova or Kalos, which are America and France. So, yeah. technically, oh. if they did set it, or they could make their own region in, like, New, well, New York's Unova, California or something, <gasps> then, like, mm. and then it wouldn't be an issue with whitewashing because they would be white anyway. Okay. Um, I just want to bring that up. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens with Pokemon right, movie rights. Mm, ho- hopefully it becomes a thing and it gets a good director behind the, the project, a good studio that would that will take care of the franchise and know what the franchise means. Because just think about it. A Pokemon movie w- would make like a lot of money on, in the box office. Just Would it? Just, yeah, yeah I would. think so. I think so. It's just Pokemon, Pokemon live action. It, it would. Okay. Then I want a Mario Kart. As long as, <laughs> as, as long as, as long as it's good. If it's, no, it won't even matter. Really? No. no it, yeah. It'll do it'll, great it'll the matter. first weekend if it's bad, but it'll drop off like, yeah. like a certain Dark Knight. But <laughs> it, it has the potential to do really well for the first weekend because you want to see it. It's the yeah. first time you're going to see a really well done live action Pokemon movie, so you're gonna go see it. I mean, if you've been a fan for 25 years, you've what are you almost 40 now? If you've caught it when it first started, so yeah, you're gonna yeah. go see it. And I think the the drop off will be whether people joined in at you know Ruby Sapphire whatever, mm-hmm. and then you get the generations. But no, it it has a potential 100 100 million first weekend. Um. Yeah, and it could if it's five years, um, out of, five years out. This this project is five years out. It could be like a great twenty fifth anniversary project. Mm-hmm. So, okay, cool. so much stuff to think about. Um, so do we have any more Pokemon news? Uh, no. I want oh, to Pokemon ask. Go. We're gonna yeah briefly discuss um okay. some details about the real time battle system. Uh, which has been confirmed to be part of the gyms. So we do it, actually? I mean, to me, it sounds kind of interesting anyway. Um, so you have a, you actually have a stamina gauge. Um, and you can perform both quick attacks and sort of charged attacks. Uh, quick attacks you just do by tapping quickly. Charged attacks you obviously tap and hold, and they use more stamina. Um, Additionally, we know there are type advantages and disadvantages, so you'll have super effective and not very effective, that kind of thing. You can also actually dodge attacks by swiping left and right if you can sort of read where the attack is going to be coming from, which is actually pretty cool. Never been anything like that in a Pokemon game. Um, so, I mean, while it is different from the regular system, it actually sounds kind of intriguing to me personally, especially when you account for the type advantages and disadvantages. Also, apparently, in line with the traditional Pokemon games, um, you will not be automatically healed after each battle. Unlike in some games, like Xenoblade, where you get healed, um, you'll have to recover your health with a potion or whatever it may be. Um, so keep that in mind as well. So, uh, this this these details come from the Australia slash New Zealand uh, open field testing. Um, and again... As we've said before, hopefully the field testing makes its way to Europe and North America soon. Uh, I'm eager to try it out. Seems seems interesting, you know. Even if it is different from what, you know, different from some of the series conventions, it sort of retains a lot of the core ideas in some ways, you know. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but I, I, I want to see how it actually works in action. Mm-hmm. I want to oh, yeah. be able to get the chance to play it. Agreed. agreed. Um. And. Uh, I know some people are mad because that it's like it, it's not gonna have the turn-based um, uh, system like in the games, but mm, I think they're trying to make it more like um, let's, for example, let's say the anime that you could like dodge the Pokemon dodge attacks and stuff Point like that. Point, yeah, that's so. like um, uh, what's it called? That Fate mobile game. It, it's, Is it? Yeah, it sounds <laughs> oh, really? a lot like that. And, but it's Pokemon, so... It's yeah, except it. instead of using uh, characters from different mythologies, you're using Pokemon. 
<laughs> What's it yeah. called? Fate Go. That's what it's called. Oh. Oh. Okay. Um, but yeah. We'll see. We'll see how that turns out. Um, so, Enix. I hate I I absolutely hate oh NNX leaks at this moment, but I love it. I love it. It's good news. <laughs> no. I'm so I'm so thirsty. Oh, I, no. I just um, like the salt it uh, produces. <laughs> oh my god! So um, yeah, NX rumors. We have a bunch of them this week. Oh, so which ones do you want to start with the? First one, the first one from. Wait, wait, wait. Can I read it? Can I read it? I want to read something. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Okay. X86 architecture. Does anybody care? Uh, well, that makes it easy to port, presumably right. from Xbox right. and PlayStation. But other than that, no. Okay. Backup data to Nintendo server. I. That's, this is pretty much good. cloud saving, right? Yeah. Like cloud. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so this mm. is like the Xbox One, where everything's saved in the cloud, and you just get it when you yeah. re-download stuff amazing I, I like that if, i like that if it's cross save if it's a game it has like cross save like let's say um with, hey, like it being handheld, it, yeah with mm. it being a handheld and a home console that guarantees cross save right yeah well, so hopefully. well it's nintendo so support for additional <laughs> screen so eh, no, gamepad right they're gonna have gamepad compatibility Mm, maybe. maybe. Uh, looking maybe. at the second rumor, I think it's more the NX's controller as a second screen. Yeah. Nah, either one. That's fine. Keep the gamepad. Remember, I like the gamepad. So, it can handle ports of current gen games. So, I could get Assassin's Creed Syndicate on it as a port. Perfect. Uh, we'll be able to handle smart device apps. Great. It, they've already got their you know toe in the water with Mitomo. And it uses NX software will unlock my Nintendo rewards, which we've already done all that stuff. And I think this question was posed on Twitter, and uh, Arms, I think you responded to it too. But with it having being able to do ports, I really think they should bring the top Wii U games and port them straight over. Because uh, a lot of people doubt. This might lead us very well into our next. Uh, yeah, the second rumor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good segue. Um, so yeah i know i do that's my thing (laughs) so okay so um yeah so earlier this week uh someone on neil gaff posted a couple of rumors um he separated it in tiers so let's for example if it's like tier one that means one he has one source that confirmed this rumor to him and tier two he has two sources Two sources and tier four, he has, of course, more than four or whatever. So, on his tier four rumors, uh, one of them is that the NX will be more powerful than the PS4 by a noticeable amount. What do you guys think of that? What do you guys Uh, think about that? That's that's potentially uh, very good. Um, You know, a lot of people will point at the PS4K. However, I believe um, that. So the PS4K is like pretty much 99% a real thing that's coming out this year. Um, I believe that if we're comparing that to NX, then the PS4K will only be... Sl- and again, if this rumor is true, uh, the PS4K will only be slightly more powerful, maybe even just about on par with the NX, again, if this is true. The thing also um, to remember about PS4K is all its extra hardware is going to be going to displaying games in 4K. It's not really... I don't think they're going to... Because they don't want to like make a PlayStation 4K exclusive game and miss out on the uh, PlayStation oh, yeah. 4 audience. So that is a good point. I I'm pretty sure most PS4 and Xbox One games are still going to be developed for their original hardware, not the upgrades. Mm-hmm. Good point. Making an exports very easy. Um, yeah. If, yeah. If it is. Game of the Year editions. I mean, you bundle Splatoon with everything, Mario Kart with everything, Smash oh, yeah. with everything. Okay. You could even and bundle so, in the new Zelda U with Zelda in Wind Waker HD. And bundle so it back. Now moving into our next now, now part. You're this, talking. Now yeah, you're talking. Okay. Now you're talking. Bring, bring over Wind Waker and, and oh, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> now, this next part of the rumor focuses on, on those Wii U ports. Um, this guy, 10K, um, this is sort of also confirmed by Emily Rogers and Liam yeah. Robertson, um, 
talking about uh, they they are all incredibly confident that Smash Bros. Four and Zelda Wii U are both going to be on NX at launch. Um, Along with, well, mm, port, port, ports ports uh, of Wii U games include yeah, ports, uh, Splatoon, okay. Mario Maker. However, however, um, Smash Bros. Four and Zelda. All, all the sources are 100% confident that these games are 100% confirmed to be released at launch. As for Splatoon and Mario Maker, many are saying that they're in development, but um, Nintendo's not sure if they will launch them. And apparently not because of control reasons, but because issue transferring data from like Wii U servers for the game. So for Mario mm-hmm. Maker, like maybe difficulty transferring the levels or difficulty you know transferring specific user levels um, to the creator... And as for Splatoon, um, transferring player data as well as making it cross-compatible to Wii U players. Those are two things they want to achieve that they seem to be potentially struggling with. So, basically, those two might get released if they can get those issues ironed out. But you can, you know, it's going to be pretty darn likely that we see both Smash 4 and Zelda Wii on NX at launch. So look forward to that. Okay. It's pretty exciting. Um, um, Even though, and this is coming from someone who... um, so, to be clear, a lot of people hate on the, you know, the PS4 having so many remasters, um, and I'm personally someone who's, you know, to a degree fine with it, which is why I'm fine with it here, too, because I feel like it's good if you can develop new new games along with it, which I think is what Nintendo's planning to do here. And the reason it is good is because, you know, pretty obvious, but for the people who were unable to experience the previous generation of the system, so in this case, the Wii U, and in the PS, and in Sony's case, people who didn't have the PS3, being able to experience those, you know, those uh, very popular, very good titles in a you know, like an improved form, is a great reason to buy the system along with brand new games. Yeah. And okay. it's it's cheap for Nintendo to develop. It's like a win-win situation as long as you're not missing out on more new games, you know. Yeah. So so the problem with that is, um, so I, I get why Sony ported. Like a lot of PS3 games to PS4, mm-hmm. the P, there's a the P, the user base on PS4 is huge compared to the PS3, uh, and most of the people that played um, that own a PS4 didn't really own a PS3, and like you said, they didn't get a chance to play games like Uncharted <laughs> or The Last of Us. Right. And so, some of those people are like gamers that used to have a Wii. Or okay. just switch from a Xbox 360, right? Mm-hmm. So it make it makes sense for Sony to port games like that, so other people uh, can experience those games and then be more familiar with the characters. So by the time that Uncharted 4 comes out, they'll know who Nathan Drake is, who Sully is, and all that. Um, I would say that Nintendo can do that as well, but. Who's gonna buy those games? And do the you people who think... didn't buy the people who didn't buy Wii U, so a majority. And and, of and they're okay. And but... do you think if those people are gonna try to go to a, uh, the NX if they're already on PS4 or Xbox One? If Nintendo can bring okay, if Nintendo because those can... are the people that Nintendo wants right okay, now. Okay, hold on. N- Nintendo has a a recipe. I'm gonna tell you it. Uh, a recipe I think they can use to succeed here. Okay. So. There's a few key components. Uh, big ports of big Wii U games. Check. Big original first party games. I'm talking big games. Uh, Metroid. Seems like, yeah, Metroid 3D Mario. Seems like that's pretty much confirmed. Well, I don't want to say confirmed, but likely. Games like that are likely to come. Uh, additionally, third party support, which rumored could be pretty could be pretty good at the start uh, with games from potentially big games from Square Enix. Um, additionally, uh, a advertising campaign and controller that makes sense. If they can do all those things, I think they can definitely draw people who did not buy a Wii U easily, very easily. Um, well, another thing uh, to keep in mind is, uh, the Wii is the only home console that didn't sell worse than the previous one, Nintendo-wise. So, will that pattern continue? Uh, do, could, do you? But, but it, it, it's hard. Just it's just hard to think that Nintendo will be able to attract those people that already own a PS4 and Xbox One because this system is going to come out, or this whatever it is, it's going to come out in the middle of the generation, uh, where the people that already have a, like a 
uh, that wanted a PS4, most of them already jumped uh, jumped ship to PS4 and Xbox One. Yeah, I mean the thing is, not all of those people, but a lot of them still have a soft spot uh, for Nintendo games. However, yeah. they won't buy a Wii U because of the stigma against the Wii U, um, mm-hmm. which I think is I think it's undeniable that there's a stigma against the Wii U. Like you okay. go on comments for so many Wii U games, people are like, "Oh, game looks great." I'm not buying a Wii U though. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. So, so you cannot deny that how popular that mindset is. However, if Nintendo can make an appealing system with NX, yeah, people are going to buy it. It needs to that's have third-party support for that. It needs to yep. have yep. I think that's, third-party support. I think that's going to happen. That. Yeah, and hopefully that third-party support doesn't drop after the first year, like mm-hmm. we mm-hmm. uh, did. Um, so, we all of us here own a Wii U, right? Yeah, are we yep. going to buy those? Are we going to buy those sports? On X, on an X, are we gonna uh, buy Mario Maker again? Are we gonna buy Splatoon okay, again? Okay, hold on. Um, I'll, I'll let me lay that out for you. Uh, I will. Ooh, I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna buy Zelda. Uh huh. Wait, what, Mike? <laughs> I said, ooh, you're laying. <laughs> like, um, like you're me. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> flirty, po- flirty me pose. I'm actually laying on the couch right now too, so it, it all kind of ties together. Thanks um, for the vision. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you wearing pants? But, <laughs> Yes. Oh, yes. We're fully clothed here. Okay. Um, but Wait, anyway. <laughs> but anyway. So I'm planning on buying uh, Zelda on NX rather than Wii U, most likely. So yes to Zelda. Yes to Smash Bros. Um, ho- hoping for a discount on Smash Bros. Though, but I, I still love to have that game around for parties. Well, the discount will be that you'll get all the content, all the DLC characters, all the stages on there. So it's your game of the year. This year. We'll see, we'll see about that. Um, and Split... Mario Maker, uh, and this is hypothetical assuming it does happen, Mario Maker, no, Splatoon, yes. I love Splatoon too much to not have it on the new system, so, yeah. yeah. And uh, I think Connor brought it up on the Unleashed chat that we have on Twitter. Uh, he said that he would rather ha- have Nintendo work on a Splatoon 2 than just port it over to the next... Oh, uh, dude... They're totally yeah. already working on Splatoon. I think both are happening simultaneously. Yeah, uh, I, but, I, I can I can only assume. Yeah, um, but yeah, just everything makes sense. There's a, a lot of people play Splatoon. Splatoon is big in Japan. Yeah. Smash oh, Bros. It is, is big here since uh, there's a really competitive scene over here. Um, mm-hmm. So it just makes sense for them to port these games to their next uh, platform. Because if they don't do that, they're just going to abandon them. Exactly. They're going to yeah, abandon they're, all they're, the weed. They'll abandon all the Splatoon players. Yeah, it's They'll like, abandon all, all the Smash players. Mm-hmm. I mean, the thing is, those are popular games on an unpopular platform, so they're kind of cursed. And Nintendo yeah. wants to solely, sort of fully harness their potential, which no better way than to release them on a new system with a wider appeal. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Um... So, any more rumors? Uh, we're going to stay there for NX because there's a lot to discuss. I think it would take a long time to cover everything. Um, but those, okay. those ports uh, are, I think, probably the biggest talking point. Uh, I just want to yeah. bring oh, oh, one yeah. up. Uh, it's the yeah. very last thing he has listed. Yeah. That's uh, Tier 1. I was going to say that. Nobody knows anything about the handheld. Um, yeah. They don't even know if... Well, from what I can tell from here, they don't even know if there is a handheld mm-hmm. yeah i i was originally of the stance that th- this thing was going to be a hybrid but i'm leaning more and more towards it's purely a home console what do you guys think uh um i i still say it's both but we're gonna get one later mm, yeah interesting. i'm with you as we so you think the hand you think the handheld might come later i think the system uh, the home console version launches this fall slash winter so november mm-hmm. and then i think the handheld launches in february or march yeah that so. seems reasonable or maybe summer who knows I would... yeah it depends on what they're trying to do with it i don't right uh, yeah anything could happen i would um, prefer I per... if they do a hybrid just because that's getting close to what we suggested like a month ago two months ago or something with uh a reverse Microsoft of Nintendo focusing on handheld and ditching console just because oh, yeah. they can't seem to provide games for both. 
because like right now the 3ds is really dead aside from uh games that came out in japan a while ago or third party stuff like bravely second uh and the wii u kind of i mean it has paper mario and potentially zelda but it's fairly dead too but even last year the wii u didn't have a lot last year compared to the 3ds right so it just seems like nintendo can't support two at the same time so if Mm -hmm. they uh combine them then they wouldn't have to support two right and the other way i think it's or the other reason i think it's reasonable to believe that it would be hybrid is it does seem like both of the systems are sort of uh, nearing the end of their lifespan with no huge games on the horizon with the exception of Zelda Wii U. Hey, Paper Mario. Um, Gotti. Well, I don't know. Metroid and, yeah. Federation Force. Uh, big game of the year. <laughs> hey, with 3DS, I would say, you know, the last, the last major game. Um, I mean, I, I, like, well, as much as some, you know, I mean, Sun and Moon probably being the biggest title. I know Metro- some people will love Metroid, some people won't, but hey, Sun and Moon is undeniably the biggest thing I think the 3DS has list- left to offer. Kirby! Um, so- oh, well, I love Kirby too, and but that's... Amiibo. Uh, all right, well, <laughs> more and more games are coming up. The point is, it, it seems like both games, or both systems, I could be wrong here, but it seems like they're slowly drawing to a close. Um, mm. Kind of hope oh. I'm right, because I really want to see the Annex just burst out the gates. Yeah. Um, I'm excited. Um, yeah. Uh, well, you forgot another game that's going to come out later this year. Oh, Shin Megami God. Tensei. Yeah. Can't wait for that. Um, mm. So, so uh, Noah, did, did you happen to read what Stealth said on Twitter about the NX? Uh, well, he said a lot of things. What do you mean specifically? Uh, so, so uh, user at Stealth, and I think he has two underscores. Yeah, two um, underscores. So he says that a lot of uh, he's heard that Japanese developers are excited for the NX. Um, big, big uh, Japanese developers like Square. Sure. Well, yeah, uh, I mean, are excited I... for the system and um, that it, it's it's been a while since Japanese developers have been excited for a Nintendo console, mm-hmm. and they are right now for for NX. As much as I want to believe, as much as I want to believe that's true, I'm not sure if he's a reliable rumor source uh, or not. Uh, well, I'd say Square. I would say so. I'd, I'd say like, out of all the Square, NX Square, games Square. officially confirmed right now, all of Square, them are yeah. Square games. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean that's just another thing to think about. Yeah, no, um, no, turn them be good. Like I will definitely pick up. Final Fantasy VII Remake if it comes to NX at some point. So, we'll see. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Dragon Quest so, eleven. So. Yeah, just another thing, thing to think about. Um, it, it would be great if Japanese developers back up the Wii, the NX um, mm-hmm. once it comes out and get uh, maybe Atlas. Well, I really doubt Atlas is going to even port games like Persona on Xbox One. or and, Yeah, so I'm not even going to try to think... <laughs> So they're gonna port it to yeah. NX. Oh, Atlas does love the 3DS quite a bit. So, uh, yeah, I think yeah, they do. for Atlas, yeah. it more depends on how successful something is in Japan, because Xbox um, is garbage in Japan. Yeah, but uh, so in another case, they they ported or they have released uh, those Persona fighting games on Xbox. Those take. But they. Those take. But that they're much not gonna effort though. But they're not going to release the core Persona games on on uh, Xbox or other platforms. Even even now, the Shin Megami Tensei games are on Nintendo consoles. Then Persona is on PlayStation. <laughs> it, it's so maybe the next Shin Megami Tensei is going to be on the next. So that'd be great. Hopefully, that'd be cool. Shin Megami Tensei Five. Yes. Shin Megami Tensei Persona Cross six. Fire Emblem. <laughs> yeah, Cross Pokemon. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. Um, So, another topic that we have here is uh, the MPV numbers for March 2016. Zelda, Twilight Princess HD, and Pokken made the list. Um, That's surprising. Yeah. Yeah. No, and get this. Pokken, I mean, um, 
Street Fighter 4 didn't even make this list. And Pokémon did. <laughs> that, wow. Well, that's because Street, Street Fighter 5, Street Fighter 5 was <laughs> unfinished, so no one bought yeah. it. But it, still, uh, still, it's, it's impressive that a new fighting IP outsold the most popular fighting game. Yeah, ever. and don't forget, Sony pushed this game so hard. And Nintendo oh, yeah. barely pushed Pokémon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Like, we knew about Pokémon's release date, what, maybe a like month? Like, cu- a couple months no. before, yeah. Oh, not a month before it came wow. out. Yeah, they didn't really give a said release date until that direct that, uh, that they did, like, in February. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, so Legend of, the Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess HD is number three, so that's good. And Pokémon Tournament is number seven. For, for me, uh, is anyone really surprised that Zelda hit came in number three? Yeah, I'm surprised about that. Like it outsold Grand Theft Auto Five. That's that's, that's a pretty big deal. Well, um, Grand Theft for a, Auto for a sing- Five is like two years old. But oh, it but always it, charts. It, it's Grand, it's it Grand Theft Auto. Charts. Yeah, but it always charts. It charts on. It, right. it, I'm, so they're counting uh, all the platforms here: PS4, Xbox One, yep. 60, PS3, PC. Yeah, so. but mm-hmm. I mean, it has to slow down eventually. Like. People well, yeah, but... can't just keep buying it. You run out of you, you people. Know, I mean, but you, you know what? You know what? Game don't. Always starts. You know what? Minecraft. Game always starts? Minecraft always starts. Minecraft has been there since it came out on Xbox. Yeah. Yeah, Minecraft and the latest Call of Duty game. Yep. They're and Emma, and like uh, NBA, MLB, those kinds of games. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, it's it's uh, pretty good news for mm-hmm. um, Nintendo having their. I think the only two games that they re- Wii U games that they released in a while right. on there. We'll see if right. Star Fox will continue the trend. Doubt it. I hope so. I mean, I, I doubt it'll get. Well, I think is I doubt it'll get as high as number three. But even if it makes eight or nine, I think that would be pretty cool. We'll see. I hope it does. Yeah. So, any thoughts? Any closing thoughts about this topic? No. <laughs> um. Yes. I don't think there's too much to say. Good job, good job, Twilight Princess. Hopefully, Nintendo sees this and um, gives Grezzo some more projects potentially. And I've seen a lot of people saying that, but people are like, "Oh no, Grezzo didn't do a great job." Here's what a lot of people don't realize: it was actually Nintendo who said keep it pretty similar art style to the original. It wasn't Grezzo. Um, it wasn't Grezzo. It was. Or no, I'm sorry. I, I, I meant Tantalus. I'm sorry. I meant Tantalus. Um, a lot of people were saying, oh, Tantalus didn't do a great job um, visually, but that was a lot of Nintendo's influence, so we don't really have Tantalus to blame for that. Mm-hmm. I, and I, all in all, it's, it's a good... I'll have to see what if they get any more projects, what those are. Um, it, it's interesting, because I'm, I'm sure that was a low-budget project, which we know they've maybe had done for a little while. So we'll see. We'll see what the future holds for them. Good month. Good month overall. I guess. Thank you. We'll we'll move on. Yeah. Um, So uh, those are our topics for this episode. We had more, but we're running out of time. So Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, So yeah. So we'll save them for another episode. And of course, um, uh, Mike has to come come on. Like when we. uh, So I want to do an episode where we just talk about Amiibo again. Just Amiibo. Dedicated Nothing but Amiibo? Entire, well, a main topic about Amiibo. And I, w- I want to do that eventually. Maybe soon. For uh, when, when was the last like last uh, big wave that Nintendo Amiibo, of Amiibo mm-hmm. released? Like That was last month. Four, right? That was mm-hmm. when Splatoon came out. Well, the when launch... When came out. That was the 29th. Yeah, of so. May last year. So it's been almost a year, but the last big wave was, I mean, Ryu, Famicom, Rob, Roy. Mm. That was in March. But was what was the last wave where people actually went to camp out? Oh um, <laughs> yeah, that, it was that one, right? May, yeah, wave four. It was that one. Yeah, uh, that so, was the Charizard, Pac Man, Wario. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. But so I want to do something. That was fun. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I just want to talk about <laughs> that. commemorate it. Yeah, commemorate. Talk about how it's changed drastically. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I want to do an episode for that topic. Um, And hopefully you'll be on. Please, Mike, come Uh, back. uh, (laughs) 
<laughs> come back. Yeah, that's fine. I'll do it. Mike, Yay. come back. All right. Baby, come back. As long as it doesn't interfere with nothing. I got nothing. I'm fine. I'll be back. <laughs> so, we started a Twitter group. Yeah, Amiibo. Oh, yeah. You want me to do it? I'll do it. So, we're giving away a Ryu Amiibo. Um, we decided that, hey, why not? Since it came out last month and I was going to be back on again. And originally, remember, I was supposed to come back on and talk about Twilight Princess. And uh, we didn't do that. Because these scrubs don't know how to beat a game. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll have to come back on again. And we'll, uh, my review would be 8.0 out of 10. And I have no reason to go back and play it again. <laughs> so that's my take on Zelda. It looks great. A little foggy in some spots. Uh, the game plays better than what I remember from the first hour I played on the Wii version, and that was it. But to me, Wind Waker still holds a, a better... I think it's just a graphic style. So there's my take on Zelda Twilight Princess. And now to give away the Amiibo, um, you had to retweet and follow... Skype? This, oh. this, what? Is anyone there? Where did everybody go? <laughs> yeah, that was that was bizarre. <laughs> I didn't see the arms. Camera. Discord. Uh, Skype. It's arms. Where is arms? Did he die? Oh well, yeah. Oh, he did. He's, yeah, he's gone. He's not in the <laughs> rip. We uh, gave away too much out of his own pocket, which none of it was his pocket. Um, so. But you know what? Forget them. We'll finish it. So the poll this week for Blaze Kick is going to be SpongeBob versus. Patrick. Oh well, what about the what about the giveaway? I just did the giveaway. Did no one? Oh, didn't we not we record didn't, that? I didn't we, we get it. We couldn't hear it. We couldn't hear it. Oh, uh, uh, you got it. Stupid. You know what? Microsoft and Skype. You guys can. The winner is Suave Villain. Congratulations. You win a fantastic Ryu amiibo, and train them well. Or display them. I don't know. Whatever. Have them cook for you. <laughs> um, First do whatever you want. Chef. Yeah, exactly. Uh, paint them. Make them look like Ken. Because we all wanted a Ken costume. But there's no freaking Ken. Okay. Anyways. Uh, so, yeah. So, go ahead and actually uh, DM me with the address uh, at BigMike8109. And I will ship the Ryu Amiibo out because it's currently in my possession. But we co-promoted it. So, I will half credit. Yay. Yay. Woo. So anyway. we can't we can't get a hold of arms. He's not back. Oh, yeah. uh, he went to. He's back. Oh, he's back oh hello. I've been here. Oh in my god! Shadow. In the shadows. Yeah. <laughs> Did you hit mute? No, he was gone. Uh no. Yeah, wait. Uh, something happened. Technical difficulties. Mm, yes. Oof, you're back. Continue. Continue. Yeah, continue. Yeah, continue. Free service. So, yeah, no, that was it. We already gave it away. Thanks a lot, Arms, for all your help. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you for offering to pay for everybody's lunch tomorrow. Uh, <sighs> great. Okay. That's used to me, but all right. I'll go with it. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, we have our poll this week. And also, well, we'll talk about last week's poll briefly. Um, well, I'll start with this week's. And that is SpongeBob versus Patrick uh, to go with the new Splatfest. Um so that'll be up soon. Connor, you, you, what do you do that on? Tuesdays? I forget. Or Sundays? I Wednesday. forget which one. Oh, um, no, no. Yes, you, 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 you ask, like, all the time. Yeah, every, every, every week. Every week you ask. Every week. <laughs> Next time I'll get it right. You always get the day wrong. Always. <laughs> Next time I'll get it right. It's Wednesday. Uh, by the way, we it might start being a little different in timing because... Uh, I'm done with school, and I used to. I had two classes on Wednesday, so I just post it when my first one ended. But uh, I so I'm not gonna be a, not gonna be doing that. So basically, just I'll look at the clock, so I might miss it and do it late. Nice. But it will always run for 48 hours, no matter when I post it. Ooh. Okay, so I got last week's one. Um, we asked, "Are you enjoying Mitomo?" We had 37 uh, votes bro, with that was 84. Two weeks ago. Oh, bruh. I'd be. <laughs> we asked if the Zelda rumors are true, would you play as male or female Link? 
and female. Fifty-seven percent said male. Forty-three percent said female. Yeah, uh, some of these replies are very interesting. Yeah, to me. we asked for. Uh, we got a lot of. Replies. Yeah, we oh, actually yeah. got a lot. Uh, let's see: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Which that? Thanks for replying. I guess yeah. it's because I we gave. Say, we didn't say we didn't say bonus. Give your reason. Yeah, I said bonus. So when we made it required to reply, no one replied. <laughs> <laughs> we make it a bonus. Yeah. Say bonus. Yeah. Uh, um, I voted because I wasn't on last week, so I. So I we're gonna read some of these. <laughs> yeah. I, I like. I just want to read some of these. Some I dis- Some. Nope. Some, some I disagree nope. with. Uh, can I read one? <laughs> oh yeah. No. <laughs> Okay, this is the third one. I don't know who is for that person's uh, Twitter username. I think it's L- at Leonidas Olympia. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, he said female, or that person said female because Kawaii. <laughs> I like the person I, directly man. above that from or Scotty because Link is a effing male hero. <laughs> yeah, we just said that is censored. That is not exactly what he says. <laughs> Um, yeah, he said the word. Yeah, we're trying to keep it family friendly here on Unleashed. Um, so a lot, notice a, a lot of the replies. Well, a lot of replies said male. Um, yeah. Seems like that was generally the more vocal response. Mm-hmm. Uh, one tweet we Connor and I agreed we quite liked was from Perry Fan seventy four, which is a great name by the way. Great <laughs> avatar, great everything. Mm-hmm. Um, Said I'd have to see the final design of the female option to make a concrete decision. Honestly, character design is one of the big reasons I choose female over male in cases like these, example of being Splatoon. So I agree, personally. Um, I love the design of the female inkling in Splatoon, which is why I chose her. So that's actually interesting reasoning. Um, Personally, I think I'll choose female unless... I mean, for me, again, it is all about the design. Like, if the design is good... Um, and not like Linkle, then I will. What? Um, Bruh, Linkle, will... best. Why? Uh, I hate. I, yep. I, 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 do, I do not like Linkle. Get out of um... here. <laughs> You're fired. fired. Uh, oh no. Okay. I'm going to play that Donald yeah, Trump clip. You guys have clip. a spot open. <laughs> <laughs> so here's another response from um, Eric. So he's at Disturbed. Yeah. Our biggest or, fan. One... Yeah. He said, female. Because sometimes the best heroes just happen to be a woman. You tell so. him, Eric. You need to yeah. roleplay as Katniss Everdeen. <laughs> what? <laughs> you're playing oh. as <laughs> your Katniss. <laughs> okay, okay, and then and another one that, uh, that I want to read out. Uh, from Chronic at Chronic Throne. He said, Mel, hands down, Link will always be the protagonist, in my honest opinion, for Zelda games. Um... Well, I agree still with... still be Link. Tim, it's like, yeah, but... Who says Link is male? Exactly. Um, like, n- and someone else or, says... Uh, I mean... It, it's... I, I want to try to respect everyone's opinions, even though I'm going to have to disagree yeah, yeah. some of them. Um, yeah. Someone says male because Link is male. It's like, yes, ma- Link is generally established as being male, but, you know, he could change. Um... But, uh, again, you know, regardless of whether we agree or disagree, thank you for all your opinions. Thank you for voting. Yeah. Interesting results. And I expected... thank you for, for replying, for giving us reasons. Yeah. That, that's mm-hmm. awesome. And th- this actually got 54 votes, which is pretty great. I think we already yeah. said that. But um, And I was actually sl- expecting females to slightly win. I was That was my prediction anyway. Um, but Early cool, on, it cool actually was. Cool. I think I screenshotted it and showed it in the chat. But early on, female had like 63 or something. Mm. It must have come yeah. in waves or something. Um, but anyway, it's like we already said, SpongeBob or rather Patrick versus SpongeBob. Wait, yeah, yeah, Patrick. <laughs> Wait, no, SpongeBob versus Patrick. It doesn't really matter uh, yeah. what order. And, the, yeah. and then bonus, give a reason why. <laughs> oh yes, uh, no bonus. Yeah. Say your favorite quote from the character you voted for. <laughs> that, that's it. Okay. Yeah, that, that's um, fine. yeah, it's it's quality. It's quality, my friend. Anyway, so that's the poll for this week. And, and <laughs> next up, well, we're going to do some plug. Um, yeah. So, the, of, of course, there's the adaptations editorial written by... Mwah. Uh, it is written by uh, Connor, my friend Connor. Um, yeah. Connor, can you give us a brief synopsis, my friend? Well, uh, it, it's not out yet, so these guys are getting <gasps> exclusive oh. deets. But uh, basically, mm. it's... Uh, 
in the uh, Blaze Kick podcast, uh, we, I don't know, we basically the three of us, me, Kel, and Arms, brought a topic. Mine was on adaptations, and I kind of decided after doing that, I wanted to talk a little more about what makes a good adaptation and a bad adaptation. So I basically wrote that. It delves into. Uh, I stick a lot to anime just because that's what I know, but I use examples. I used uh, the Divergent series, The Walking Dead, and uh, Marvel movies, just in general, uh, for my points. So, yay. All right. Yes. There's also the PSP3, which I guess is is Sony's... I guess it's Sony's <laughs> attempt to follow up the Vita. PlayStation Point! Episode oh, 3. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was great, that was great. <laughs> the new Vita. Check that out on PlayStation. <laughs> yeah, exclusive uh, reveal. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, so there's a new episode for the PlayStation Point. Uh, yeah, go check it out if you like uh, any PlayStation. Like also, we PlayStation about. PlayStation Point is yeah. a much it's a much better name than Dudecast, so thank you well, for changing that, it. That was taken, so <laughs> it's still a much better name. Huh. Yeah. Hey guys, uh, it's time. Hey, uh, they only weren't it because it was taken. It, it was taken by someone. For some reason, I don't know. Guys, it's time. <gasps> it's time. What to plug? What for? Anime. I finally yes, made we're my back. decision. We're- we're back with the anime plugs. So uh, th- this anime airs Saturdays, so we're technically going to be plugging a week behind because I don't want to plug an episode I haven't seen yet. So you guys can watch it free on Crunchyroll when this airs now. And it's actually on Funimation too. So dank. It's called High Fury. It's Oh, it's Guy Fury? High Fury. Ah. <laughs> uh. Oh, if it was called Guy Fieri, I'd be so glad I would watch it. It's basically about this, like, high school, but it's a Navy thing. And it's just so great. There's this character oh. named Reen, and she's voiced by the same person who voices Hanio in Love Live. So you just hear someone... It would be someone... great if she was voiced by Guy Fieri. <laughs> <laughs> so you just hear someone be like, Reen, and then Hanio's <laughs> voice answers. Only arms will get that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, Mike, do you have something to plug? <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. Uh, starting soon, preferably next month, I will be actually launching my own podcast. Um, it's Said Enough Games. I actually have the Twitter handle, so if you want to follow that, at Said Enough Games at Twitter. Um, and on Instagram, the same thing, as well as Snapchat. And there actually be a website, but it's not launching just yet. We're not ready for it, but that is also coming as well. I don't know if we're doing anything else with that, but that's pretty much it. So it'll launch next month for sure, prefer probably towards the end of May. Right. Hey, Square Enix, you think you're cool with all your NX launch titles? But have we got a launch <laughs> title for you? <laughs> Nintendo. That's right. Me. Said enough. And yes, we will be using stupid said enough puns, like when we're done with the conversation. We're like, all right, I think you said enough. And we're going to look at each other and laugh. Ah. And then segue into something else. So yes, there'll be plenty of random things we'll also be um we'll be at e3 as well oh. so we'll have yeah. some stuff going on from them nice and yeah i think that's about it all right nice uh yeah we'll, we'll definitely plug a, the podcast once it, it uh you have the first episode up can't wait for that um <laughs> as i was saying with the launch titles which is a completely failed segue <laughs> um <laughs> i tried picking you up there that's okay. Yeah. Uh, so I, I thought it was PlayStation Point, but I guess Nintendo Unleashed. Both. Um, both. Oh, both. Both of them are coming Maybe. to uh, <laughs> potentially Google, actually... Google Play Podcast, which is the best launch title. Um, <laughs> Google Play Podcast apparently launches. Third, yeah, eight... third party support confirmed already. So that's yeah, good. So yeah, so <laughs> a lot of people have actually asked if Unleashed is a on another podcast server or uh, service. Uh, well. Of course, I just we just replied. No, we only have iTunes because iOS is superior. Um, Ew. So, uh, yeah. So I we're, we're about to, to lose. We're about to lose half of our viewers. Uh, uh, sorry about that. So we, like, we decided. We decided. Don't ever, to... don't ever side with one. Just <laughs> leave that neutral. 
Okay, I have an iPhone. So, uh, so yeah, so we decided to try to bring Unleash to other people that want to listen to it on their phones. And I found out about the Google Play podcast. I didn't know that it wasn't up yet. I submitted the podcast like a couple of weeks ago, and apparently the service is barely going to launch on Monday. So, so yeah. So Once that hopefully, hype. Yeah, so hopefully we'll be there. We got approved. The PlayStation Boy and Nintendo Unleashed got approved, so hopefully we'll be there. You should so, have lied title, and said Google approached us and asked us to be a launch title, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so they can so we can be on, sponsored on their on their on their we can be yeah. sponsored on their video game podcast page. <laughs> Imagine that'll be great. Yeah, so, so if you okay, so here's the thing: if you uh, d- discovered this podcast through Google Play podcast. Send us a tweet, and we'll retweet it, and yeah, <laughs> that's we'll, it. We'll, we'll, that's tag Google, we'll tag Google. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, make sure we'll, Google's we'll... there. We need to spam them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so <laughs> uh, so Patreon changes again. And just for pledging a dollar on our Patreon page, you'll get access, early access to Nintendo Unleashed and the PlayStation Point, and you'll get access to the Patreon-exclusive monthly... The Blaze Cake podcast. The first episode is now up, so all uh, $1 patrons will get access to that. Um, and Mike here is a patron. Patron, <gasps> right? <gasps> Yay! Yes, I am. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. You're welcome. Thanks for, help- thanks for helping us out. And hopefully, you guys listening right now can help us out with um, just throw us a buck or anything yeah just give really. us a single dollar you'll get extra benefits mike, yeah yeah you'll get money. podcasts really. mike became our money, patron uh, so quick it was as if he did it before we actually launched it to the public yeah, yeah. nothing can <laughs> yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah that'll be funny if that happened <laughs> yeah it, uh, we totally didn't link him it beforehand and he yeah uh so subscribe to our youtube channel where i think it's still blaze kick media Hit the subscribe button, like this video, comment on the podcast, and do all that. Mm, share it on Twitter. Share it on Twitter. Yes, exactly. And also, <laughs> subscribe and rate us on iTunes. And now, subscribe, and I think you can probably rate on <laughs> Google Play Podcasts. So, do that, please. That will help us uh, get more get more people to listen to the show. So, yeah. We need to get better uh, numbers. We need to get better numbers. <laughs> yeah. And visit and like us on Facebook. We're at Blaze Game Media over there. And follow us on Twitter. I'm at ArmsMXZ. Noah? I'm at Daddy007. No, oh, shh. Hunter? I'm at Dubletrez Uno. <laughs> Mike? <laughs> at Big Mike 8109 And then what's your podcast? Uh, uh, at, at Said Enough Games. All right. And Blazekick is at Blazekick Tweet. Um, so yeah, guys, go visit Blazekick.com for country. Nintendo guy, uh, so guy Fieri recipes. Yeah, Fieri. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> that, that's it for this episode. Uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks, Mike, for being on again. Crunch bar, blue snowball, and hopefully you'll be back soon. So definitely, bye guys. More penguins. Stink. Yeah, penguin zone. Woo, penguin zone. <laughs> <laughs>